boys and girls, again, my name is Mrs. Wiki. We're welcome. We're glad to have you. We're going to be inside for a little while, this room and the other room. So if you want to take off your jacket, that's fine. If you want to keep it on, that's fine too. Just when we leave this room, you have to take it with you to that room, okay? Today you're here pretending that it's the 1800s. In the afternoon after lunch, you'll be in the cabin in the log barn. This morning, we're doing the maple part of the program. They did tap maple trees in the 1800s. They did make maple syrup. So our methods may be slightly different, but it's still something they did in the 1800s. OK, we have to talk first. You sure you don't want to sit, sir? OK. We have to talk first about how plants make their own food. Did you study that last year? Do you remember it all? If some of you know it, well, that's good. All right. Plants can make food inside themselves. Animals cannot do that. We're animals. We have to find it, buy it, grow it, but we can't make food inside our own bodies. The way plants make food is with a special process. They're green leaves. I've got leaves on my shirt here, by the way. These are maple leaves. Very good, chlorophyll, very good. The green in the leaves, the chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight. We can pretend that's sunlight, okay? And it, they absorb the carbon dioxide from the air around them. So breathing in from the air. They give off oxygen. That works well for us because we take in the oxygen and we breathe out the carbon dioxide. The back, the Backward. Backwards. Very good, that's a good way to look at it. Okay, and the process of doing that, of making food for themselves, is called photosynthesis. Do you remember ever hearing that word, photosynthesis? Yeah. Sorry. Good. That's how they make food for themselves. And it's in the form of sugar. That's what helps them grow. And we're lucky because sugar maples have especially sweet food that they make for themselves. It's stored in the sap. The sap and the sugar in the sap is used for the plant to grow in the spring and the summer. It goes up to the top of the tree, it helps make new leaves, new buds, flowers, if, if there are flowers involved. Anyway, growing, all right? But in the winter, trees and plants actually do not grow. They hibernate, they sleep, they're dormant, so they don't need the sugar in the middle of the winter. Did you have a question? It's like, it's like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like other animals. It act, in the winter, it acts like a bear. Okay, that's the same idea. Bears sleep during the winter too. So the other problem with winter is the sap inside the tree is frozen. So even if we wanted to tap the tree, tap means bore a hole, hang a bucket, collect the sap. Even if we wanted to collect the sap, it's not rowing, uh, running or flowing in the winter, it's frozen. The time of year when we can make maple syrup is when it's freezing at night, but above freezing during the day. Do you know what? temperature at what temperature water freezes 32 very good so above the, in the day it has to be above 32 and then the sap is thawed and it flows up and that's when we can tap it but if it freezes at night the sap stops flowing next day if it's warm it goes up again we can it's flowing we can tap it March, that's usually when we can do maple syrup. Now, you know how cold this March has been. It has not been a good season for maple syrup, but we're hoping this week will be better. Okay. So, oh, one more thing about the sap. The maple syrup already has a sugar in it. We don't put any sugar in it. No color, no preservatives, nothing. We don't put anything into it, but we have to take something out of it. The sap comes out of the tree with too much water in it. Yes. Let's, you knew that? Good. Let's pretend there are 10 of you here. Do you know how big a gallon jug of milk is? Yes. Yeah. Can you picture holding four gallon jugs of sap and pretend there are 10 of you? What's 10 times four? 40. 40. 40. It takes 40 gallons of sap collected from the tree to boil down to make one gallon of syrup. There's 40 times too much water. So how do we get rid of the water? We boil it and it goes up as steam. And you'll see that when we go in the sugar shack. Yes, sir. Oh, so my sister came here before me and she said the sap that was right out of the tree tastes just like water, but the syrup tasted like very sweet. I will let you taste some sap out of the tree if there's any not frozen, and you will get to taste the syrup, yes. Okay, so that's our story, part of our story. You're lucky you live in Michigan. 
because only the Midwest, can you see the map up here? Here's New England and here's the Midwest, here's Michigan. Only where you see that yellow part is where sugar maples grow. If your grandparents live in Florida, they can't make maple syrup down there because there are no sugar maples. <laughs> If you ever travel to California, people out west cannot make maple syrup. The sugar maples don't grow out there. So we're lucky we live in Michigan. Michigan produces about, is, ranks about seventh in the United States for producing, can you wait please, maple syrup. A little state in, Ver, in uh, New England that starts with a V, have you heard of Vermont? Okay, yeah. Vermont is number one in the United States for producing maple syrup. But all the New England states, the Midwestern states, the country north of us produces more than we do. What country's north of us? Canada. Canada, right. And can you picture their flag? It has, right, it has the red leaf on their white flag, and that's the maple leaf, because they produce way more maple syrup than we do. They more sugar maple. You've been there? Good. Okay, you probably saw the Canadian flags then. All right, so there's our map. What helps a tree produce even more sugar is if the leaves at the top can get up to the sunlight. Remember we said they need sunlight. This part of the tree is called the canopy. So if the canopy is big and way high up without other trees on top of it, then that tree is probably going to make more sugar than skinnier, crowded trees. Okay, and one more thing about the tree. You know what the leaf looks like. You can look at my shirt. This is what the seed looks like. We like to call them helicopter seeds. They have that little wing. Okay, let's see if we can make it spin. I don't know if it's too dry. Oops, sorry, too dried out or not. Let's try. Oh, there it did a little bit. <laughs> that one did a little bit. That's good. Okay, so how did the settlers find out about maple syrup? Well, the Native Americans are the ones that taught them. And the Native Americans would actually move around and camp where there were sugar maples. They'd camp there in March and make as much. They made syrup, but they actually boiled it farther to make sugar because they traveled around. They walked around a lot. And you don't want to carry syrup in your pocket, right? It'd be better to carry sugar. So if you keep boiling more of the water out, it turns to sugar. So that's the Native Americans. When the settlers came, they brought the big um, metal pots. They'd have a fire under it, under it, and they would boil the sap that way. Okay, yeah, we have a big kettle we'll show you down there. What we have now, at the end of the 1800s, it was a, it's called a sugar shack, and it's a big, flat, sort of a stove type thing with lots of channels in it. And because there's so much surface area, there's a lot of boiling going on and the water evaporates faster. So you'll see that, Mr. Badger, he's doing that. Okay, what else here? This is a sled that they could have pulled a big collection bucket on it when they were dumping out the sap. This is a yoke, you'll, which is stuck, Never mind. <laughs> you'll see one of those in the barn you could put on your shoulders to help you carry the buckets. Okay. And one last thing, oh no, two last things. Maple syrup, I forgot this part. You cannot buy it, you cannot make it in a uh, factory. You can buy it in a store, but you can't make it in a factory. Most of the, the only way you can make maple syrup is tap a tree, collect the sap, boil the sap. In the grocery stores, maple syrup, pure maple syrup is expensive. So most people buy things like Aunt Jemima or Mrs. Butterworth or Kroger's favorite or, Anyway, it comes from a plant, but not from a tree. Maybe the adults know, you know, it comes from corn. It's corn syrup. It's still sweet, it still tastes good, but it's not maple syrup. Okay, this is the last thing. Do any of you like to write poetry? Yeah. Yeah, some of you do? Good, okay. Well, several years ago, one of the Lone Pine, actually Mrs. Noon's class, wrote poems. And these are some of the poems. It doesn't have the year here, so I'm not sure what year well, she wrote them. But years ago. Oh, okay. Looking at the names. Yeah. Okay. And we had a caretaker here, Dr. Dennis Travis, that liked to write poetry. So he wrote a nice poem here called The Sugar Bush. Sugar Bush means a group of maple trees. Why it's called a sugar bush, I don't know, because they're not bushes, they're trees. But anyway, this is a poem. So I'm going to read this. We're just, it, we're just doing the poem, so two minutes, we'll be done. If you would like, if you're a good reader and you want to stand up and read with me, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can sit and listen. But there's a chorus you can all help me with. Here's the chorus. Drip, 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 drip. Okay, so you can all help with that. All right, ready? Chorus. Drip, drip, drip. Drip. Good. 
crystal clear, sweet to sip. Nature's bounty overflowing. Bring the buckets, keep it going. Ready? Drip, 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 drip. Good. Freezing, thawing, morning glow, waking from the winter snow. Sunny day, frosty night, pressure pushing sweet delight. Ready? Drip, 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 drip. Stoke the fire, means put on wood. Vent the shack, empty buckets, take them back. Boil, bubble, I declare sweetness fills the balmy air. Ready? Drip, 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 drip. Fragrant fog, rafters dripping, toiling, laughing, children sipping. Ever sweeter, boiling down, sap the syrup, golden brown. Drip, 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 drip. Now, if you seek a special treat, boil until it's ultra sweet. Swirling, scooping, pouring, cooling. Ah, maple candy, are you drooling? Drip, 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 drip. Very good, <clears throat> very good, thank you for helping. So, that was written in 1994. If you will take your coats, we're going into the other room. So I'm going to read you a few pages. There are not many pictures, but when there are, I will show you the pictures. All winter, Pa said, Grandpa has been making wooden buckets, just like this, and little troughs. He made them of cedar and white ash, for those woods won't give a bad taste of the maple syrup. These are what we put into the tree for the sap to drip out. Anyway, to make the troughs, he split out little sticks as long as my hand and as big as my two fingers. Near one end, Grandpa cut the stick half through and split one half off. This left him a flat stick with a square piece at one end. Then with a bit, a drill, he bored a hole lengthwise through the square part. And with his knife, he whittled the wood till it was only a thin shell around the round hole. The flat part of the stick he hollowed out with his knife till it was a little trough. He made dozens of them and he made 10 new wooden buckets. He had them all ready when the first warm weather came and the sap began to move in the trees. Now in the book they're calling these troughs. We call them spiles, S-P-I-L-E, and they're made of metal. You'll see when we go down to the maple um, trees. But the, same, the purpose is the same. It goes into the tree, the sap runs out, and into the bucket. Okay, where was I? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. So if you, you can buy metal spiles, but they made their own wooden ones. And even today, if you have a maple in your backyard and you want to tap it and put a spile in it, this is something you can make or your parents can make. It's from a, a kind of little tree we have here called sumac. Sumac, it grows everywhere. And it has a soft pith, the inside, so you can hollow it out with a nail or a drill or a um, a bit of some sort, hollow it out, make the round part that goes into the tree, hollow this out. So I'm going to pass these two around. Make sure you look through them because you're looking through where the sap would go. Then Grandpa went into the maple woods and with a bit he bored a hole in each maple tree. And we're going to do that. We're going to drill into the tree. And he hammered the round end of the little trough into the hole and he set a cedar bucket on the ground under the flat end. The sap, you know, is like the blood of a tree. It comes up from the roots when warm weather begins in the spring, and it goes to the very tip of each branch and twig to make the green leaves grow. I didn't mention in the other room that we can only do this when the temperatures are going up and down. If it's always cold and freezing, the sap's not moving, so always winter. If it's always warm, the sap's up at the top of the tree, helping the tree grow, and it turns bitter so we can't tap then. So March is usually when we do it. When the maple sap came to the hole in the tree, it ran, uh, it ran out of the tree down the little trough and into the bucket. Didn't it hurt the poor tree, Laura asked. No more than it hurts you if you prick your finger and it bleeds, said Pa. We don't take that much sap from it. So here's some pictures. On this page we have a bucket just like this and the little troughs like we're passing around. And on this one, you can see someone drilling into the tree. You can see the buckets under the tree catching the sap. And here's somebody with a yoke on their shoulders. Remember that wooden thing in there? I couldn't get off the sled, but anyway, helping carry the buckets. 
Every day, Grandpa puts on his boots and his warm coat and his fur cap, and he goes out into the snowy woods and gathers the sap. With a barrel on a sled, like the sled in there, he drives from tree to tree and empties the sap from the buckets into the barrel. Then he hauls it to a big iron kettle that hangs by a chain from a cross timber between two trees. So let me show you the pictures here. Here's the sled with a big bucket on it. And look, it's being pulled by two big strong cows called oxen. And over here is the metal pot with the fire under it. And it's, he's got it between two trees, OK? So the settlers, and even some people today, used big oxen or horses to pull the sled with a collection bucket on it. And that really worked well. Nowadays, they use tractors. But tractors make noise. They pollute the air. They burn gasoline. They get stuck in the mud. The horses and oxen didn't pollute the air, didn't make noise, didn't get stuck. They knew just where to stop. And yes, as you said, people still do use horses and oxen today. Thank you. OK. Uh, Grandpa emptied the sap into the iron kettle. There's a bonfire under the kettle, and the sap boils, and Grandpa watches it carefully. The fire must be hot enough to keep the sap boiling, but not hot enough to make it boil over. Every few minutes, the sap must be skimmed. Grandpa skims it with a big, long-handled wooden ladle that he made a bass with. That's to take off the foam, because you don't really need the foam. When the sap gets too hot, Grandpa lifts ladles full of it high in the air, thank you, and pours it back slowly. This cools the sap a little and keeps it from boiling too fast. When the sap is boiled down just enough, he fills the buckets with syrup. But then he can boil it longer until it grains when it cools in a saucer, and then he's making maple sugar. So it just depends on how long you boil it and how, how much water you take out. So that's why it's called a sugar snow, because Grandpa's making sugar, Laura asked. No, Pa said. It's called a sugar snow, because a snow this time of year means people can make more sugar. You see, this little cold spell in the snow will hold back the leafing of the trees, and that makes a longer run of sap. So that's what we've had. We had it was warm briefly, and then got really cold, so the sap stopped running. Now it's running again. Why we want to have a sugar snow for the season to continue is because if you can make extra syrup or extra sugar, you can take it to the general store and trade it for things that you can't make yourself. Yes, sir, what's your question? Um, actually, what do you say it's frozen to make a syrup? What if you make a giant hole and then, make the, and then you throw maple syrup as long as you can until it goes back to soft? Oh, well, it all depends on the temperature. And you really don't want to drill a giant hole or you might kill the tree. But that's a good thought. OK, boys and girls, you're good listeners. We are going to put on our coats, bundle up, and go down to the maples. Yay! All right, everybody. You may have guessed that we've reached the maples, because look at all the buckets on the trees. But we still want to know how to find one ourselves. So here we have a tree with smooth gray bark. We have opposite branching. And and take a look at the growing, you want to back up just a little place? The growing tips. You see the buds? Are they long and skinny and pointed and brown? Yeah. Yes. Okay, the kids in the back, see the different kind of tip there? Okay, so this is a maple. And if we weren't absolutely sure, yeah, we actually have leaves under this tree. So. What, what do you think? Is that a maple tree? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right. Like right. Okay, so we found a maple. Should we tap this maple? Yeah. yeah. It's too skinny. It's too skinny. And if it has we to grow bigger. That's like right. Years. Oh, it's you're right. Very good. Very good. <laughs> if we tap if we tap a tree that's too skinny, we'll kill it. It's like if you cut yourself and you lose a lot of blood, it's not good for you. If you just scr scratch yourself, that's OK. But if we took too much sap out of there, it'd be dead. So if you think it would be nice to have a maple tr tree in your own yard so you can make maple syrup and you plant a maple tree, plan on living there, as this gentleman said, 40 years. It takes 40 years to get big enough. How big is big enough? 10 inches. You know how wide a ruler is? Can you hold your hands like a ruler? Okay. 
So just a little less than a ruler, 10 inches, and it takes 40 years to get there. We didn't plant all these maple trees. A family that lived here a long time ago, 100 years ago probably, planted them. I don't know if they ever tapped them, but we get to tap them. So we're very lucky that they did plant our trees. Yes? Did they um, live in the log cabins? That's a good question, and no. We built the cabins for our own programs. They had a house here, but the house is gone now. Okay. All right, let's see what the sap looks like. If you would like to see what sap straight out of the tree tastes like, I have some little cups and you may have a taste of it. It, uh, yeah, it tastes like water, but maybe a hint of sugar in it. So here's how we're going to do this. Are we listening? Thank you. I'll give you each some. If you like it, fine. If you don't, you can pour the sap on the ground, but don't drop the cups, please. I'm going to collect the cups. Raise your hand and tell me why we have a lid on all the buckets. Hands, yes. So um, the animals don't eat So the animals don't oh. drink it. That's a good guess. What else? And also bugs don't eat So bugs. bugs don't get in. We do have filters later on, yes? And um, also because if it rains too much, then it'll go in there and then it'll right. only taste like water. Right. Remember, we already have too much water in it. We want to keep out rain and snow. That's good. And you had your hand up too. Is that what you're going to say? No. no? Okay. If, like, it would get all icy. People think it'll keep it from getting all icy, but it'll still get icy if it's yeah. freezing. It's to keep the extra water That's out. Yeah, so let me put the lid back on here. Oh, and then, it's so good. We're gonna get don't, don't fall over, but look up. Look up at the top of our tree. Does it have room for its leaves to get lots of sunlight? Well, it's going to get a lot of a lot of sugar? Yeah, I think yep. so. Tell me about it. It's, it's, okay, it's, that it. You already know that. That. it's pretty tall, but I also think it only has half a canopy. Can you see? It really only has branches on this side, so maybe it's not as sweet as we might think. So this is the way the settlers would have boiled the, the sap to turn into syrup. All right, let's not swing it though, please. We don't want it to fall. Okay. All right. And we'd have a fire under it, okay? All right, we're walking this way. Scientists keep track of everything. They take records, they write down in their notebooks. So this is the 2019 weather data. These are the temperatures to show which days would have been a good day for the sap to flow. For the best sap flow, the high temperatures during the day have to be 40 or above. The low temperatures at night have to be below freezing, below 32. So February was pretty much a disaster because it was hardly ever warm. Let's look at March. The lows, okay, we had lots of numbers below 32, right? Just a few higher. But how about during the day? How many days were good for the sap to flow? A lot, 40. More than before, yeah. Anything of 40 and above, so here's some. Okay, there's a 51 and a 61. The sap was really flowing that day. All right, so that's what that is for. Every day we write down the temperatures. So here, this is, this is called a sap cup. We have sap in here. This is an instrument called a hydrometer. The red thing on the bottom is a weight, and there are numbers at the top. This floats, and whatever number is at the top of the sap, that's the percentage of sugar in this sap. Can you tell me what number's at the top there? What do you see? One, two, I think. Two, two yeah. That two percent sugar is an average tree. Most of our trees are two percent. Okay, well, you see the two? Bef yes, right, before boiling. All right, five. this ca uh, sap cup has different sap because look at what number's floating at the top here. Uh, I made it go down. Yeah, three, three and a half. It's at least the, yeah, more, a little more than three. So that's good. Our sweetest one we've ever had is usually like 4%. So if you have 4% sugar in the sap, you only need 20 gallons to boil to make one gallon of syrup. If you have 2% sugar, you still need 40 gallons. So it's less work if your trees are sweeter. Now, what would, I like hands, what would make a tree, one tree be sweeter than another tree? Any ideas? Okay. 
More sunlight. More sunlight. Very good. What else? What's going to mean it gets more sunlight? Even though water makes not as much maple syrup, it actually kind of helps. Well, what makes a tree different? It has to spread out. Okay, maybe a wider tree. That's good. A taller tree, sure. And a tree that's taller and wider and has more of a canopy, it's probably an older tree, right? We used to have a tree in this back corner here that was 4%, but one year we had a lightning storm and the lightning hit the tree and we lost the top third of the tree. So what that was the end of that. These are called calipers and what do you suppose we use them for? I'm to measure the tree to make sure they're um, the How wide the as fat or wide. Should I say? As it needs to be, right. To measure the tree to see if it's wide enough to tap, okay? so. How about this young lady? Would you like to measure our tree here? See if we could tap this one. Put it around the tree now. Push it together. Okay, we'll push it all the way. Well, it's almost. Okay, what number? Nine. Nine, nine and a half. So is that wide enough to ta tap? No, it really needs to be ten, so we're not going to tap that one. All right, we'll leave this here. Okay, who's not holding something? All right. One, two, three. All right, you three. All right, four. The four of you may pick a tree for us to tap, okay? Uh -uh. It needs to be a maple, it needs to be 10 inches wide, and it needs to not already have a bucket on it. So how about if we had, I don't know, we might as well go that way. Well, we'll let these kids do it. They're going to lead us. Okay, you kids lead. We'll follow. One, two, Three, good, that's the flesh, the pulp coming out. Before we put the lid on, it is actually dripping. So if you'd like to, taste it. Boys and girls, our next job is to collect sap. And we're going to do it with two teams. We're going to have a girls team and a boys team. Who from the girls would like to start holding it? All right, you hold this. Who from the boys would like to start holding it? Okay. now. Here's how it works. I'm the leader again, okay? Follow me, please. We're gonna rest it on the edge first and then tip it. You holding it? It may splash, be careful. Okay, got it? Keep tipping. You got it? Keep going. our big reservoir, okay? That holds 300 gallons of sap. There's a screen on the top, like a window screen. So when I climb up there and pour it in, if there are leaves or bugs or anything, it'll stop at the screen. There's a hose that goes into the sugar shack, and that takes the sap in there for the boiling, okay? So just stand there while I do these. Stay there, please. So you'll be able to hear it, okay? All right. Who hasn't held a bucket yet? All right, you can hold this one. Shh. Okay, now this one. Okay, a boy that hasn't held a bucket. Here, this gentleman. Excuse me. Okay. We're going in now to watch the sap boil and to turn into maple syrup, and you will get a taste of it too. There's a wooden floor. Please stay on the wooden floor. Make sure you stay on the wooden floor. All right, well, welcome to the Sugar Shack. This is where we turn maple sap into maple syrup, hopefully, if everything works right. And the steam in front of you, of course, doesn't hurt. It actually helps. It's got a little sugar in it. Could make you sweeter while you stand here. Oh. You can say the steam has sugar in it. That means it would actually fall down because it has some sugar in it. Well, watch what happens. That steam goes up yeah. and it hits a cold roof up there and may turn back into water and drip on your head. So if you feel it drop, that's what's happening. All right? You guys read a poem a few minutes ago where it said, Sto uh, Stoke the fire, vent the shack. All right, let me show you how you vent the shack. Look up, you see the vents up there? Oh, yeah. So we have these ropes, and that's what you use to open them up and let the steam out. Now, obviously, some of the steam doesn't go out, right? It all depends on how much moisture is outside. If there's a lot of moisture, more steam stays in the sugar shack. 
How do you stoke the fire? You grab a piece of firewood like this. By the way, notice how this firewood's been cut and split. That takes a lot of work. I saw the saw there. I saw the saw. Yep, we have to do this. You actually start collecting your wood maybe a year in advance. And it has to be dry and cut to the right size and split the right size. And you have to wear gloves to protect your hands because the stove is very hot. So I open the doors and I stoke the fire by throwing the wood in there. Got to keep that hot fire going and then close the doors before we lose the heat. The heat feels good, but we want the heat to go that way. So the smoke from that fire is going up the smoke stack right there, the pipe. All right. All right. Are you ready for the famous recipe? Yeah. This is a recipe that you will not find in the cookbooks, okay? Repeat after me, please. Boil the sap until it's ready. Boil the sap until it's ready. That is the recipe for making uh -huh. All right. What, you, what firewood do you use? How much firewood? No, what, what's a tree? Is that a maple tree, too? Huh. Uh, if there were a maple tree available, we would burn it because that's good wood. Most of the wood that we have here is ash that was killed by this little bug called the emerald ash borer. Oh yeah, they, I think, I, I know like a bug that lives in China and, and some of it goes to like, I think South America. Yep. And then first they, they, they destroyed and the trees. And it came here yeah. and it killed our yeah. ash trees. Yeah. So we can use it for firewood. It's really good firewood. By the way, I gotta say yeah. something of her. Sometimes woodpeckers will, will catch them. Sometimes yes, they, they will eat them, that's right. I All right, so South right let me show you what you can make besides maple syrup with this recipe that we shared. You can make pure maple sugar. Or you can make pure or maple rock candy. And all of these are made with the same recipe, only you change one word just a little bit. You boil the sap longer until these are ready. You get rid of more of the water. One last thing, and actually it's my favorite. Pure maple cream. Maple cream. This is a spread that you'd put on your muffin or your bagel. Oh, is that good. And the way you make this is you boil it down and you stir it a lot. You have to whip it. Have to make our maple cream. We're going to give you a taste of our maple syrup in just a minute. And I want you to understand, I'm sure you realize by now that no, what is in this not. bottle is not the same as what we're making here, right? This is Mrs. Butterworth. There's uh, Aunt Jemima log cabin syrup. This is made from corn. No maple at all. If you look at the ingredients, no maple at all. It's corn syrup. It has artificial color, flavor, thickener added to it. Real maple syrup is not very thick. When you pour it on your pancake, it comes out fast, so be careful. Um, so it's very different than what you would find in this kind of box. Um, so is it more expensive in the store? Real maple syrup is more yeah. expensive. And you can see why. It takes so much more work to make it. Yep. I went to Vermont and I got maple syrup. Ooh, Vermont. They make the most in the United States. I yep. Know that. And of course, Canada makes more than the U.S. does. You know what? I've heard that Michigan could make more than Vermont if we tap all of our maple trees. So, in other words, we have a lot of maple trees out there throughout the state that don't get tapped. If they were all tapped, we could be the number one state in the U.S. in maple making. We're going to take this maple syrup to town. We don't have much cash. We're going to trade our maple syrup for, for things that we need, like a plow, so we can plow our garden. So we have to figure out how much is our maple syrup worth. Here is the grading scale for maple syrup. They call the lightest one the most expensive. And this is called golden, and they oh, describe the flavor as delicate. I have that one at home. 
All right, then we have amber, and this has a rich flavor. Then we have dark, and that has a robust flavor. And then there's actually another one called very dark, and that has a strong flavor. So we put some of our own maple syrup in this bottle. Which one do you think it, it uh, grades up to? Yeah, I think so too. I think we're making amber so far this year. The steam is everywhere here in the sugar shack. All right, here comes our taste. It's pure maple sugar. Yeah. Like, is it good? We have a tree with smooth gray bark. We have opposite branching. And take a look at the growing, you want back up just a little place? The growing tips. You see the buds? 